Sai Baba. He is one of the world's most revered spiritual teachers. He was born in South India in 1926. As a child, it was well known that Baba had an uncommon compassion, wisdom, and generosity, and that he gave his helpings of food to beggars, eating almost nothing himself. He exhibited scholarly knowledge of things he could not have studied. At an early age, Sai composed exquisite music in classical Indian style, music that was used at religious festivals and that contained the knowledge and wisdom of a sage. In 1940, when he was 14 years old, he declared to his family that he would henceforth be known as Sai Baba, which means Divine Mother Father. He further declared that his mission was to renew spirituality in the world by teaching truth, right conduct, peace, love, and nonviolence. Now, in that same village, he has an ashram or retreat center that is the size of a large university. Tens of thousands of devotees from all over the world and from all religions and cultures gather there to see Sai Baba walk or drive among them which he has done twice a day, almost every day, since 1940. Sai Baba shows us how society should ideally function. He tells us that society should supply free to everyone clean drinking water, medical care, and education. Since 1995, he has provided free drinking water to millions in India. This is an undertaking the government of India has never been able to accomplish. It is the single largest social benefit project carried out by a private organization anywhere ever. And it was done without once soliciting funds. Sai has constructed immense state-of-the-art specialty hospitals in India and smaller general hospitals which provide free services to the poor. These services range from open-heart surgery to instruction about hygiene. Emphasis is placed upon healing not only the body but the mind and soul as well. Sai Baba has established schools of the highest caliber ranging from elementary through postgraduate work. These schools produce graduates who are in demand throughout the world. Their high academic achievement is not the primary goal of Satya Sai education. The goal is not merely information, but transformation and the building of character for society's leaders of tomorrow. Baba's devotees and students distribute food, clothing, medical care and love to the needy around the world. Sai Baba founded and leads membership in the Satya Sai organization in over 170 countries. The members of these Sai centers are united by a common goal, spiritual growth. Centers study the teaching of Sai Baba and sacred literature of all religions. They gather for devotional singing and humanitarian service projects. Membership includes people from all walks of life excluding no one. Center programs are compatible with all of the world's major religions. There are never any fees, nor are donations ever requested. The following are some of Sai Baba's teachings in his own words. I have come to light the lamp of love in your hearts to see that it shines day by day with added luster. I have come to tell you of this unitary faith, this spiritual principle, this path of love, this virtue of love, this duty of love, this obligation to love. It is enough if love is cultivated, the love that knows no distinction between oneself and another. It does not matter a bit if you have no faith in me or God, 
Have faith in yourselves. That is enough. For who are you, really? Each one of you is divinity, whether you know it or not. Man must know his pricelessness. Baba says he is not here to start another religion. Rather, he urges others to be the best within their own religion, if that is what they choose. He says all faiths share in the eternal presence of love. And, as Betty Babcock, an American follower of Sai Baba, says, that eternal presence is available for all people to discover. The eternal presence is there. And there's no difference. And that's what Baba tells us time and time again. In fact, in front of his house is the huge stupa, which uh, encompasses uh, the five major religions. And uh, he's always said, don't leave your religion. Don't re leave your belief. But simply uh, encompass it and grow and change your, uh, the heart and love everybody. Sai Baba asks people to see themselves as incarnations of God, as the ideal of goodness. He points out that God is everywhere and in everything. Baba told me in an interview that everything is God. And I scratched my head and I did not understand that everything, absolutely everything is God. And, and so I started reading everything I could about uh, spirituality, the lives of, state, of saints, enlightenment, um, whatever I could find to enlighten me about this statement, and um, now I'm convinced. Man can realize his mission on earth only when he reveres all others as divine. Love all beings as manifestations of the same divinity that is the very core of yourself. Love all beings, that is enough. Sai Baba says his task is to bring about the spiritual regeneration of humanity through truth and love. Los Angeles heart surgeon Dr. Chowdhury Valetti says ancient spiritual texts spoke 5,000 years ago of the intention to bring harmony to the earth. During eras of long darkness that come to the world, God periodically sends incarnations of God, avatars as they're called, to bring added light. Um, I, I think Sai Baba is, um, I would say, depending on, is like a mirror. You see in him what you want to see. And I see in him an avatar come here to make our life better, more purposeful, more goal-oriented, and uh, make the whole world a better place for everybody. Love is God. God is love. Where there is love, there God is. Love, love, love first love as long as life lasts my life is my message and my message is love many longtime followers of Sai Baba have been studying his teachings not only from a spiritual perspective but from a scientific point of view as well you're you're sitting in a room which has been a Sai Baba center for over 30 years Longtime Sai Baba follower Dr. Sam Sandweiss is an American psychiatrist who has written extensively about Sai Baba in his book The Holy Man and the Psychiatrist. I think one of the big things is we're in a dark age <laughs> and people are very much interested in the external world and sensation and uh, the, the false belief that uh, happiness and meaning come from external objects. Dr. Sandweiss tries to practice Sai Baba's teachings of cultivating a deep spiritual life as a means of achieving lasting peace and happiness. This is difficult for even pundits, sages, and holy persons. I mean, I've read where Swami has said, not even a one in a million of the great pundits that discourse on that really live it. That is, um, that 
it's, it's simply not right, not true, that external objects bring you ha lasting happiness. And that's a very... So if you're caught in believing external objects, then you're caught in a, a, a world of... Um, pleasure is the interval between two pains, and pain is the interval between two pleasures, and you get knocked around between those two. It's the, the area of duality, where you see separateness, and things are not unity, they're separate. Sai Baba teaches that all hearts are motivated by the one and only God. He tells us to cultivate the attitude of oneness between people of all creeds, all countries, and all continents. He says, this is the message of love I bring. A lesson learned quickly by Sean Brown, a longtime Sai Baba follower from Australia. Swami also uh, he gave a very powerful quote where he said, love is the natural state and any other emotion is unnatural. When you radiate uh, love to a person, if you send a wave of selfless love to a person, it must have some impact on them. If you keep radiating love to them, slowly and gradually it will change them. It weeds out the bad qualities and brings up the good qualities. There is only one religion, the religion of love. There is only one caste or race, that of humanity. There is only one language, the language of the heart. There is only one God, and He is omnipresent. The terminology may be different, but the concept is not. The undercurrent of energizing power in all cases is love, love towards all beings. Dennis Lowell from Australia says people are transformed when they learn about Sai Baba. So if anybody that comes in contact with, with Swami has changed. That regardless of whether we accept it or not, we're all changed. You can't help but be changed in some way if you come in contact with him. How has he changed you? Uh, he's changed me you know, right across the board, I think. And the first thing he's, uh, he's changed me is that uh, his unconditional love. I think my capacity to love unconditionally, and that's probably the most important thing, has been changed. Um, to love without expectation. Malkia Jones of Chicago was drawn to Sai Baba several years ago. She was reared to believe that God was unattainable until she began to study Sai's teachings. I know now something I could never have dreamt three years ago. What's that? That God is within me and He's within you and everyone else. Baba is here. And I know he's with me. I know he's with me. When you know God is within you, you can't waste time gossiping. When you know God is within you, you, you have to love each other. When you know God is within you, it changes everything. A revolution more powerful and more pervasive than any that man has undergone so far, neither political, economic, Scientific nor technological, but deeper and more basic, is now on. It is the spiritual revolution. The revolution has love as both its means and its end. It will awaken the springs of love all over the world in the fields of education, morality, law, politics, commerce, and science. It will inspire man to loving service, revealing the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. Everyone, wherever he lives, whatever his status and whichever his fate, can share in this revolution and can be an instrument for the liberation of humankind from its own ignorance. The spiritual revolution will sharpen the inner vision of man so that he can see his own reality. Its impact will envelop and enrich all human communities and transform mankind into a stream of willing helpers flowing smoothly to the limitless sea of divinity. Many hesitate to believe that things will improve, that life for all will be happy and full of joy, that the golden age will ever recur. 
let me assure you that this avatar has not come in vain and will succeed in averting the crisis that has come upon humanity. Sai Baba devotee, Seema Dewan from Canton, Ohio, has been to see Sai Baba many times in India. Her greatest teaching from Sai Baba? To turn inward to find God. It's been such a blessed um, experience for me, this entire thing of knowing God, not through a temple or through any kind of education or through any kind of um, other teaching, but my own. knowing God through your own self. I think that has been the most profound thing and it makes me look at each one of you as God. It makes me look at the tree as God, it makes me look at the wind as God, it makes me look at the sky as God. Everywhere I go, I know I'm surrounded. I am in Him, I am in the womb of God. I have not come to speak on behalf of any exclusive religion. I have not come on any mission of publicity for any sect or creed or cause. Nor have I come to collect followers for any doctrine. There is no need to change your chosen form of God and adopt a new one when you have seen me and heard me. Let the different faiths exist. Let them flourish and let the glory of God be sung in all languages and in a variety of tunes. That should be the ideal. Respect the differences between the faiths and recognize them as valid as long as they do not extinguish the flame of unity. If each person lives the ideals propounded by the founders of his religion, unaffected by greed or hate, then the world will be a happy and peaceful habitation for man. Nancy Schmidt from California says, Baba's lessons have taught her to become a vehicle as Baba directs her thoughts and actions. Try and find that peaceful spot inside your heart where you can really hear the voice of God within. And let yourself be a channel for that voice to come out. I like the feeling and the things that Baba says about let me see through your eyes. Let me speak through your mouth. Let me hear through your ears. And I think if we can all do that, we'll all be happier people, better people, and we'll have a happier world to live in. Let each one be a true practitioner of his religion. No one should criticize or hate another's religion. All are one. Be alike to everyone, declared Jesus, the one God is common in all. It is only one. Only one. When there is only one, there is no contradiction. Because it is only when you have you know, complexity that you have con contradiction. God is only one. He comes in forms. He takes names. Father Charles Ogada is a Roman Catholic priest from Africa. How has Sai Baba transformed Charles' life? Love. To your love unbounded love, selfless love. Be happy. Our Father is here. The, the, we are passing through the most auspicious, gracious moment in the history of creation. Not just history of mankind, but the history of the whole creation. God in His full embodiment is here with us. Why worry? Be happy. Be. Being is that, that emptiness whereby you allow 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 God to take over you that is my message live in the present and be happy entertain only happy thoughts the bliss that you give the love that you share these alone will be your lasting possessions happy happy be very happy My mission is to spread happiness. Come just one step forward and I shall take a hundred steps towards you. Happiness is essential for God realization. It is one of the major gates to divinity. Happiness is natural. It is to be expected. It is nothing surprising for it is the nature of the self which everyone is. That is why everyone is craving for constant happiness bliss. 
I do not want you to extol me. I shall be satisfied if you rely upon me. I bring tears of joy into your eyes, and I also wipe the tears of grief away. Bring me the depths of your minds. No matter how grotesque, no matter how ravaged by doubts or disappointments, I will not reject you. I am your mother.